How's it going, everyone? Cheese for 64 here, and we are back with more fictional characters in D&D, where we do the work so you don't have to. Today, we're transforming the iconic bounty hunter, Samus Aran, from Metroid, to Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. So, let's dive in. First, let's talk about the difficulty of this build on a scale of 1 to 5. I'm going to rank this at three. It's somewhat complex with multi-classing and management of spell slots and other stats we'll get into later. But overall, it's fairly manageable. It might be a little difficult for new players, though. As for role-playing difficulty, I'll be honest. You're kind of just a stone-faced person. Not very interesting. No offense, Samus. Uh, so I'm going to say it's a one. It's, 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 just, it's really not that hard, I don't think. But, let's get into the meat and potatoes, shall we? Starting off with our race. For a race, we're going to choose Half-Elf. This choice reflects her... Chozo DNA mixing with human. That means that she's not quite human anymore, but she's not a full bird person. The Chozo are birds, right? Like, they, they look like birds, I'm not going crazy. Anyways, Half-Elf also gave us extra skills and dark vision. Perfect for a bounty hunter, navigating the dark corners of the galaxy, much like Samus does on the planets of Zebes and Talon 4. We'll also get into her background, which pretty obviously is Soldier. This will grant her proficiency in athletics and expedition, as well as a military rank. In most of the Metroid games, she has a uh, military rank, so it's helpful to have, even if she is a bounty hunter at the end of the day. Now, on to stats. I personally am using the point-by system, however, feel free to use whatever system you want. Just make sure you have enough stats to multi-class later in the build. But here's the breakdown I use. Our strength will be 10. Dexterity will be 15, but that does get bumped by 1 from her half-elf, making it 16. Constitution will be 13, getting bumped to 14 from her half-elf. Intelligence, 12. Wisdom, 10. And Charisma will be 14, however, getting bumped to 16 with that plus 2 race. And now we're going to break down our class. We've chosen to multi-class. We're going to be a Warlock Rogue, specifically the Hexblade and Arcane Trickster subclasses. This combination allows us to replicate most of Samus' abilities using magic and stealth. The Hexblade connection to a powerful weapon mirrors Samus' arm cannon, and the Rogue's ability in spellcasting enhances her versatility. As for level by level breakdown, at level 1, we're going to start as a Warlock. She gains the Hexblade Curse, allowing her to deal extra damage and heal when her target dies. Her proficiencies will include light armor, medium armor, shields, simple weapons, and saving throws in wisdom and charisma, as well as proficiencies in arcana and investigation. Lastly, she will get pack spellcasting, which is very different from spellcasting, so keep that in mind. We will be getting the cantrips Eldritch Blast and Toll the Dead, and the spell Hex, representing her arm cannon and targeting system. We will also take Witch Bolt for a little extra damage and something to kind of act as our missiles for now. At level 2, she gains Eldritch Evocations, and we are going to take Agonizing Blast to enhance her Eldritch Blast, giving it even more damage, so it hits a little harder, and Devil's Sight for superior dark vision. Then we also gain the spell Expeditious Retreat. We probably won't use this spell very often, but it's helpful to have it a pinch to increase our movement speed and help the meat help match that speed dash she gets later on in games. Level 3. We'll stay in, in Warlock. She chooses the Pact of the Blade, creating a magic weapon. And we also get Missy Step. Pact of the Blade is pretty neat, and I highly recommend leveling that up later in the build when we can. However, I'm not going to do it in the build, just a little heads up. At level 4, we are getting an ASI for our build score improvement. And we're going to put that in the decks, just so we're a little harder to hit. Alternatively, you also can put it into Charisma, so that way your spellcasting modifier is a little better. Or, you also can put it into Intelligence, because uh, our intelligence isn't great, and as uh, we get spellcasting from another class or later that uses Intelligence as the casting modifier, it's not a bad idea 
to do so. However, also keep in mind those spell slots we get later can also be used for warlock spells, so maybe we won't use it that way. Really, the choice is yours. Just kind of pick it how you want the build to go. Personally, I'd put it in Charisma or Dex, but choice trips. At level 5, though, we are going to stay in Warlock, and we're going to get Repelling Blast. This makes it so our Eldritch Blast pushes enemies 10 feet whenever we hit them with an Eldritch Blast. This kind of simulates the missiles a little more, how they can push people back in the games, and the Game Boy games. Uh, and we also gain Spider Climb. This allows us to, pretty obviously, climb walls. And this... This is going to uh, simulate her wall jump. Not the greatest thing to do it, but there's not really a lot of things that are just like a wall jump in D&D, &D, so this is probably the closest we're going to get. Level 6, we're going to multi-class into Rogue. Gaining sneak attack for extra damage that enhances her combat prowess and agility. Similar to the swift maneuvers in battling against space pirates and metroids. And we're also going to get proficiency in thieves tools and acrobatics. Now, the important thing to keep in mind is that uh, you can get your sneak attack on your Eldritch Blast for extra damage. You just have to have the prerequisites for sneak attack in mind when you do so. So, it is helpful to have. You just got to make sure it actually would proc when you do it. Level 7, continuing as a rogue, so rogue 2, warlock 5, and we're going to gain cunning action, just a quick movement. So the spell earlier that we got to not use very often, it's now completely obsolete. Expeditious Retreat, completely obsolete now. We took it when we needed it, but if you're starting at a higher level, we don't need Expeditious Retreat, and you could choose a different spell. So, I mean, that's entirely up to you. This is a better Expeditious Retreat, since it's free, and we don't have to waste a spell slot doing it. Level 8, she advances further as a rogue, gaining Arcane Trickster. This will gain us a uh, Mage Hand Ligerman, which will give us an advanced uh, Mage Hand to better Mage Hand. As well as Acid Splash for more damage, and Firebolt as well. Give us a little more versatility to do with our spells and give us a little more damage in them. On top of this, uh, we do get spells from Wizard, but honestly, they don't really matter all that much. Uh, we can see these spells as more of like a backup spell slot for our first level's Warlock spells. Uh, because we really just wanted Rogue for the two levels. But one more level, getting those three extra spell slots is fairly helpful to have. So that's why we're just going to go one more level. So if you don't want to go this other level, I highly recommend you go Warlock instead. And then we can get uh, Improved Pack Weapon instead. Really, this one's kind of dealer's choice. If you want a little more versatility with spells, such as Silvery Barbs, Soft City of Laughter, and Shield as, like, a quick reaction, uh, these spells don't really rely on our intelligence as much, and so they won't matter if they're not as good. So if you don't want to do this, and you just want to take the two levels of rope, that is fully understandable. This is for you guys to pick, after all. I'm just the guy who helps make the build happen. One last quick thing, we are going to go over the pros and cons of the build. Uh, the pros of the build is versatility in combat. Uh, with Hexblade, we have a little more versatility and swift between melee and range, and our spells also help us from the range category. If we get that advanced pack weapon, like I said, you also can start getting bows as your pack weapon, and it's a plus one weapon then. So it'll be even further amplified and uh, your pack weapon is also a spell focus so just keep that in mind um we also have eldritch blast i mean it's the warlock bread and butter it's good for a reason especially with agonizing repelling blast pushing people 10 feet away and getting that extra damage is really good uh with cunning action we do have the dash disengage or hide as a bonus action so we can really get into those nitty-gritty neat spots as needed and with missy step and spider climb we also can get into hidden spots more often as well, as well as kind of recreating abilities from the game. On top of that, we also have shield as a quick boost to AC in case we need it, and decent utility and skills. Uh, as for the cons of this build, however, though, uh, I am going to go with the complexity of multi-classing as keeping track of 
your abilities, your two different spell slot uh, complexities from two different classes, and managing your resources is very, very challenging, especially for new players. On top of that, we are very limited by our spell slots. Warlock does not get very many, and sure, the little bump from Rogue gives us a few extra, but even at the end of the day, we only have like six, maybe. So your spell slots are rough. And last but not least, uh, you are really squishy. Not as squishy as level as like a sorcerer or a wizard, but you are only a D8 on both your hit dice, so you are still a fairly squishy individual, so you don't want to be caught in the front lines as often, because that could be potentially dangerous to you. But, that being said, that's really the full build already. If you want more of these videos, as always, let me know what you want in the comment section down below, or I'll just pick them myself. But anyways, until next time, I've been your lovely host, Jesus 64 Farewell! And thanks for watching.